Uh, oh boy. Okay, everybody. Uh, uh, would you like to get together? That's what this is for. So, uh, join in if you can, if you have interest. I'll get the, uh, I'll get the self-promotion after we gather a little bit of a crowd. I'll get the self-promotion out of the way. Maybe. And, uh, yeah, I see Mandy's there. <laughs> Mandy, how about that? Well, all right. Uh, uh, it's my pleasure to invite you to uh, visit on Facebook. Uh, and I will be able to tell you about uh, my remind you to watch O'Neill Outside television on Fox Networks across the country, on the Hunt Channel, My Outdoor TV, Gone TV, Outdoor Action, Television, uh, Carbon TV, Waypoint TV, and on and on and on. It's nauseating. So uh, you can watch the television show there every Saturday morning, 4 a.m. to 6 a.m. on WSB. Eastern Time, 4 a.m. to 6 a.m. That's getting really tough to get up. I have to get up at 2.30 for that. Can you believe that? Whose idea was that? I don't know. Uh, in any case, uh, the newsletter, you can go to my website at O'NeillOutside.com. You can see all the shows there just by clicking on VOD Networks. And so if you're interested in watching the television shows, instead of sitting in front of the television, you can watch them. And uh, so there you are. And podcasts, uh, we're doing all the podcast things, and uh, so there you are. And plus this right here. Uh, I hope it's not too much O'Neill. If it is, then tough, okay? Uh, what else? Oh, I, I have a, a, a spring trip that I want to encourage you to consider. Uh, you know, I'm always after you to take the children, take the kids, uh, Brim and uh, Crappy Fishing's starting. Brim won't be till June. But uh, here's a trip for you to take, okay, that's going to turn out very, very well. I guarantee it. Go to Santee Cooper Lakes in Carolinas. Stay at uh, the lodge there at Santee Cooper Lakes. Go fishing on a pontoon boat. Everybody has lots of room, and the children are go going to catch anywhere from 6 to 25-pound blue cats, and it's marvelous. You'd call Captain Daryl Smith, D-A-R-R-Y-L, Daryl Smith, and uh, make that a spring trip. Okay, one of the things I wanted to talk about today, beyond the book, which is O'Neill Outside, People in places along the way. You get it at my website, and I'll sign it for you. It's uh, it's good. Yeah, Amazon also all five star ratings. But what I would to talk to you, I've got all that set aside. Self promotion's done. Let's talk about nicknames. Women don't have nicknames. Nice ones, do they? Not really. Uh, mean ones, maybe, but guys have no, nicknames. No, they don't have mean nicknames. Women would not do that. Okay. That's a guy. Women don't have nicknames. I am corrected. Gail's right here, and if I get out of line, she straighten me out. No, you said they're mean. Women well, I, would not have mean nicknames. If they had a nickname, it wouldn't be mean. What would it be? Sweetie? It'd be nice, oh. yeah. Sunshine or something like that, okay. you know. Men have nicknames. Yeah, they're Men nasty. in the gym. Men at, in, in the bass fishing club. Men on their foot, you know, in the high school football teams. Men have nicknames. And I would like to know, and you can email Gail and she'll tell me about it. But I have a, a few nicknames for you. And the story behind them, which I think is really interesting, and every one of them is unique. The first one that uh, it won't be a surprise to you if you listen to the radio program, watch the television show, is a fellow from Brooklyn who moved here over 20 years ago, here being Georgia. He's a guide on Lake Lanier and a businessman, and we call him Hank the Yank. His name is Henry. We call him Hank the Yank. When he was in high school, playing on baseball teams, being the, the, the 
probably the only Jewish boy on the team. His nickname was West Bank Hank. <laughs> so, see what I mean? Nicknames are very, very unique. I know there was a guy at the gym. He wasn't a big fellow, wasn't a great weightlifter. And he was trying a bitch press one day, which was too heavy for him. And instead of having his feet firmly planted on the floor, he was kicking his legs when he was trying to bench press. Well, I, I called him Frog. I don't know his name. I doubt anyone in the gym knew his name. But everybody called him Frog. See what I mean? There was another guy. You got something? You're looking at me. I was just laughing. Jean, Jean says I have a nickname. What is it? Two-pair Gail. Two-pair Gail. Oh. <laughs> Gail had, we, we played a, a card game here uh, a few weeks ago. and We told this story we, already. We already have. Yeah. Gail had two-pair, which was okay, but they were all fives. <laughs> okay. Well. Another guy at the gym. Allison has a nickname. What's it? Yeah. Oh, well, I'm going to tell that one. Okay. There was another guy at the gym who had short legs. He was real muscular and had real long arms. And we called him Monkey Man. To this day, I don't know what his name was. I, I knew it then, but I don't know it now. But I can assure you that I remember Monkey Man. When... When Amy was, our first daughter, Amy, was four years old, and we had our second daughter, Allison, uh, during diaper changes and clothing and so forth, she was uh, active, we'll say, we wanted to turn over and roll over and twist and turn and everything, and, I, and Amy said, she's quite a twister she said mama she sure is a twister yeah mama she sure she sure is a twister and uh since then and to this day 47 years later is that right close um she's known as miss twist or twist or twister not only to family members <clears throat> but even uh, business associates call her often twist or twister and it takes that memory way back and it makes it worthwhile don't you think now i know many of you might want to talk about nicknames of baseball players and football players and all that and all that's great and that's good but i'd rather make it personal do you have a nickname what and and send it to gail here on facebook and tell me what that nickname is I know I wrote down some right here. I wrote down about Frog and Monkey Man. There's a guide at Lake Lanier, an awfully nice guy. He's been a guide for 40 years. Just as kind and gentle and productive and cooperative. And so his nickname is Sweet Milk. <laughs> Sweet Milk Doug Youngblood. How about that? Fits him perfectly. Someone would like to know, have you ever hunted waterfowl before? I know you are a big turkey hunter and a whitetail hunter, but what about waterfowl? Yes, I have hunted duck, I have duck hunted before along the Mississippi Flyway in Arkansas and uh, uh, enjoyed it very much. It's, uh, uh, it was wet and cold, but man, oh man, it was fun. It was a, it was a party. I know... We, we were in a, uh, I was in Stuttgart, Arkansas, and we were, those, those people out there, professional duck hunters, and we were in a pond inside a metal container, okay, with a flip top. I don't know what you call these things because I don't duck hunt that much. With a flap top on it, and you can open up the top and everybody shoots. And there were about five or six of us in there in a real long row. And I had my cell phone with me, and I forgot to turn it off. And I wish I could turn it on now, but I can't. But my call on my cell phone is a duck call. So the, the, the phone is in my pocket, and it, it turns on, and quack, 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 quack. It's, everybody jumps up because they think that there's maybe a duck 
out there on the pond. So, uh, so I have. Is that yes. is that what our grand dog is being um, trained for right now? Duck hunting. Uh, yeah, we have a grand dog. Uh, mm -hmm. Amy's uh, dog. Her that she's a black lab named Rose, and she is being trained heavily for. She's a retriever. Yeah. Yeah, and most of that's for duck hunting. So, and uh, it's nice. Her name's Rose. Black, beautiful, beautiful animal. Gorgeous. Um, uh, let me see here. I've got. See. Oh, I had a fraternity brother at Emory. Uh, he was about almost my size. He was about five foot six, and a big, square, blocky head, blocky body. Nice guy, and uh, his nickname was all through college. His name nickname was Stump. Yes. Stump Hicks. His name was Victor. But everybody called him Stump, and he's my age now. I guess he's seventy-seven, so probably people still call him Stump. <laughs> if I were to see him, that's what I would call him. Let's uh, see. I've got another one here. Oh, here's one of the best. Go ahead, and then I got a really good one. Go ahead. Uh, I was just gonna say the. Uh his first name is Craig, and I will not even attempt his last name. I've seen him on here before. Uh, it's spelled P E T R A S Z E W S K Y. Yes. Or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Well, people call him Petro Petco. Let's see. Petro. Because Petro. they can't pronounce his last name. Yeah, there I would you call go. It. He's fortunate just to be called that, really, if you want to know the truth. Here's a great nickname. I have a, a fishing friend uh, who is he's a fly guy, and he fishes lately near from time to time. And the streams, he's a pleasant fellow. But when he went to, on several occasions, he went to a local fly shop in downtown Atlanta uh, called the, the Fish Hawk. And I understand, I wasn't there. This I'm repeating a story. I understand that... Uh, uh, his name is Kevin, and Kevin can get, in, in a discussion, I understand Kevin can get flustered uh, and nervous and uh, and so forth. So they started calling him Fluffy. Okay. And <laughs> he gets kind of, and so it stuck. And uh, that's his name now. His name is Fluffy. And uh uh, a lot of people call him Fluffy. I can tell you that, right? Isn't that better? Isn't that better than Kevin? A lot of people are named Kevin. How many people you know named Fluffy? I don't know, but one. Does, yes, ma'am. Uh, does Mac Farr have a nickname? Oh yes, he does, and I have a story about Mac and his nickname. When I understand that when Mac was in high school, in athletics in high school, from the time he evidently you know what. For us, when I was in high school in the previous century, as soon as the last class was over, you got dressed for practice. But when Matt was in school, evidently there was a time period between the last class that he attended and football practice. So during that time, he would go across the street to a convenience store where it was evidently quiet and safe, and he would do some of his homework. Yeah, right. He would do some of his homework before he went back to school across the street for football practice. The name of the convenience store was Schubert's, or Schubert's. So during Mac's high school years, at the last ones, he was called Schubert. I never knew that. <clears throat> That's great. Instead of Mac Far, it was Schubert Far, <laughs> or just plain <laughs> Schubert. <laughs> uh, and uh, someone whose first name is Ben is called Big Ben. Oh, okay. That's that works. That works. Yeah. Big Ben, so that you'll know and not be confused. Big Ben is the name of a clock. The one in London. Yeah, London in London, England. Big Ben is yeah, a clock. I believe that's correct. Probably. 20 feet across, but it's clock nonetheless. Uh, I know my our grandson, Travis, uh, when he was a little kid, he and he still is referred by some of the family members as this because he could not 
pronounce his own name, Travis. So he said he called himself Treb. Mm -hmm. And he's still known to some of us as Treb. Treb. Mm -hmm. Treb. Uh, My Treb do it. Yeah. You can't help Travis do anything. He has to do it all himself. And it's become a family joke. Travis, can I help you do that? No, Trab do it. Trab do it. Trab do it. Trab do it. He's three years old. Trab do it. So, and he's still that way, as far as I can tell. Yeah. I talked to him today. Did I say this about the temperature? No. Huh? I talked to him. I called him. He lives uh, right on the line between the Texas Panhandle and Oklahoma. He lives in Oklahoma in a place called... Uh, Sweetwater, Oklahoma, and he guides and farms and cattle. He's a cattleman in Texas. And uh, I spoke to him this afternoon, I, you know, text, are you safe? Yes. I said, what is the temperature outside where you are? And he said it was four degrees. My, uh, so I said, well, where are you? He said, I'm in a bar. <clears throat> Good a place as any, I guess. Okay. Craig has the funny last name. He said you need to tend your fire. Yeah, well, Craig. We, we have a problem. I've got a, I used up all my cured wood, okay? All my dry wood, I burned it all. And so I've got just, I've got several cords of green wood. But if I turn that light up real loud, then it, it's so bright you can't see me. And the important part of this thing that's going on, it's me. Okay, i got to get you another nickname. Okay, here's a great <laughs> nickname. Great nickname is Lefty. Lefty Cray. He was a probably the Babe Ruth of fly fishing. Lefty Cray. Okay? He was right-handed. His name was, uh, I don't remember his name now. I should have written it down. Yeah, anyway, we'll find out. That his name was not Lefty, but he was called Lefty. Oh. And he's the, he's the uh, uh, Babe Ruth of fly fishing. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Jason Coleman, <clears throat> as a kid, he was shot in the butt with a pellet rifle. Uh -huh. And so his uncle to this day still calls him uh, Bullet. <laughs> <laughs> Jason, really, Jason? Yeah. Nicknames are so descriptive and most of the time uh, complimentary or at least zero it in. I know there was years ago when I used to bass fish tournaments uh, in the late 70s and early 80s. I don't know the guy's name, but I know in the, you know, it'd be a hundred boats in the tournament, big tournament, not, you know, six guys. And uh, his nickname was Coot. The water bird, Coot, I think he was maybe famous for fishing in shallow water. I don't know, but that's what people called him, was Coot. So, let's see if I've got some more there. Monkey me, Hank the Yank, Coot. Oh, uh, for many, many years, and I still have a lot of good friends there, for many years I had a sponsor. It was year one auto parts, the muscle car parts. And uh, we enjoyed a relationship and still do. We still fish together. We travel together, we go to Louisiana, to Canada, and all across together. And the guy that put us in touch, he didn't work there any longer, but he put us in touch to, for me to get that account. He was, uh, he raced his cars. Uh, he raced cars on Friday nights at a little track, oh, a little, it must be about a half mile track, over here in Jefferson, Georgia. Near, well, somewhere in that direction, okay? And so he raced every Friday night. So obviously his nickname was... Crash. <laughs> and he probably still is. Hold on a second. Is your mouth getting dry? Oh, that's good. That's iced tea. Right. Yeah, right. Okay. Uh, <laughs> oh, the guy said, Ben says, Jacob Lutz uh, is another coot. Okay. 
Uh, all right. Uh, anyway, that's the nickname deal, and we could uh, talk about nicknames forever, especially if you add professional athletes, some of them extremely uh, descriptive. But I wanted to toss that subject out there to you today. Uh, more seri- Of more serious nature, I have something to look talk forward to. You don't know this. But uh, uh, our good friend Milton Crabapple, is going to visit in a couple of weeks. We get our, Gail and I get our second COVID shot tomorrow, and then Milton gets his in a, in a few days, and they're going to come up here, and he's going to make squirrel dumplings. Not in my kitchen. Well, maybe he'll have to bring them. He can bring them with him. Okay. I don't want to see that stuff. <laughs> well, he says they're real good. I'm sure he does. Sounds good. Squirrel uh, dumplings. Have you ever had squirrel dumplings? Did we have squirrel dumplings when he came up for the wild no, game dinner a no, few years ago? Not. No, they're probably okay. They're, they're good but, dumplings. But I'm not going to eat one. Well, I bet I do. Uh, sorry to okay, hear anything? about this. Uh, okay, but what? I will mention because it's a nickname. Uh-huh. Uh, Danny Mahaffey lost his father two days ago. Sorry, oh. sorry about that. Uh-huh. Uh his nickname was Big T. Oh. Uh, he spent the past 20 years of his life building churches in uh, Central America. So oh. I guess that's he. Uh, Worthwhile activity? Yeah. And he. Uh, Big T. He huh? called Big T. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's all right to call somebody Big Somebody. Big T. Big something. It's, uh, it's, it's not as good to call them Squirt or. <laughs> little so-and-so it doesn't sit quite as well i know i heard about a guy today from hank the yank who was in high school and uh the the middle linebacker on their team was five foot four and uh he his name nickname i think was speed so he but he's uh, hank the yank said he was like a water bug he was everywhere so uh speed Okay, you got anything else right there, right now? Uh, squ- uh, everybody says squirrel. Yeah, eggs. they do, don't they? And Joe Moravec ate a squirrel dumpling growing up. I find that hard oh, to believe. Oh man, he probably killed it on the back porch. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Well, there you are, and uh, that's the nickname deal. And uh, I'd love to have your nicknames. And uh, uh, let's see. Oh, uh, I heard about a guy today who. Uh, uh, he, by choice or by necessity, he didn't have, well, maybe his family upbringing, but he didn't have good clothing. Uh, his jeans were threadbare, and his mother, by necessity or by choice, she would sew patches on his jeans in high school, and therefore he became known as patches patches and that la- and that name lasted with him for a long long time have you ever worn patches have you in high school i did no we girls didn't wear jeans oh, no, in high you didn't. school yeah when we Which were in high school it was kind of nice really yeah. uh some uh, mike Terrell says that if we put a paper bowl with a couple of napkins and soak it in vegetable oil and put it over there it'll burn that green wood <gasps> Oh, you want to go do that right now? No. Oh. Uh, but, but you can turn the gas jet up. How's well, that work? Well, <laughs> watch what happens if I turn it up. It gets too light. Now go sit back down and see if that helps. Okay. Have a seat. I think you cover it up, don't you? Move over a little bit. Well, that'll work. Do what? What did he say do? He, uh, uh, a couple paper plates with some napkins on it and, and some vegetable oil and stick that over there. Really? Yeah, it is kind of bright. Maybe you should turn that down. Well, why don't you go do that right quick? We'll because I have to have on my pajamas and I can't Well, no, I'm not going to put you on camera. How walk you going to Walk around there and put and do it and then bring back and give it to me and I'll put it under there and let's see if it works. Uh, all right. Dumplings sound great. Here we go. Crappy, crappy fishing is beginning. Today is the 15th of February, and 
you know, we're under a great cold spell right now. Okay, in a few days it'll be over. But their increased number of hours of daylight is going to start giving the, getting the crappy, the, the inclination to head for the shallows or either rise in the column underneath the docks and in the trees. In, it won't be long. Next couple of weeks, it's going to be time for you to start crappy fishing. And when you do, I have a tip for you. I've done this before. I learned this from a guy named Gary Moore. He was a fabulous fisherman. And what he did was, ooh, I've got a fire now. What he did was, he ordered some live crawfish from Louisiana. And he used live crawfish under the docks at Lake Lanier. And believe me, it's okay. The fish don't know where they live. If you want to catch some bass underneath the docks, believe me. A live, you, if you got two dozen live crawfish, you're going to have two dozen bites. we got fire now. Hold on. Oh, boy. That looks better. Okay. okay, now this... And here's the... Just in case... Did you put some... What it, What'd you put in there? Vegetable oil. And here's the fire aid, just in case. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I hope you. I hope everyone followed my recommendations, and you have plenty of cans of fire aid. It puts out fires immediately. There should be one in the barn, one in the kitchen, one in the equipment room, one in the laundry room. One in the garage and one in your truck. See, in the back yeah. door mm -hmm. of the truck is a fire aid. Exactly. Look at that. Well, just a minute. Let me light it. Well, it sh huh? Yeah. I don't know. He didn't give detailed instructions, evidently. We'll see what happens. Okay. All right, what have you got? Anything? So I can well, stop I just talking? just sat back down. Um... Let's see. Okay, vegetable oil in a paper plate. Oh, here we go. Oh, oh go ahead. <laughs> Danny Huff says <coughs> he wears a size 15 shoe and his nickname is Sasquatch. Sasquatch? <laughs> <coughs> Sasquatch. Well, well, I would have guessed he that. He probably deserves it. Yeah. If you wear size 15 shoes, it's not a surprise that your nickname is Sasquatch. And uh, matter of fact, we have a couple of those Sasquatch things up here running around. There, now Joe says to put Doritos on there. Oh. Ooh, look at that. Know. That's nice, isn't it? We got a nice fire now, my fire. Goodness. Well. Uh, yeah, I've got to have I've got to have a, a year's dry out on the wood, six or eight months dry out because all my wood all my wood's green. I cut trees down and cut them up this year, and I uh, ran out of the, the dry wood. Okay, what else you got? Anything? Um, somebody wants to know what Joey Mine's nickname is. I I don't know. Is Joey still on television? I think he's probably a guide remaining at uh, West Point Lake. Nice guy. Uh, he had a, uh, he had a, t Joey Mines Outdoors, Joey Mines Fishing, something of that uh, nature for several years, many years ago. I don't think he's on television now. Could be, but I don't think so. A lot of people that were aren't, and a lot of people that weren't are now on television. It's uh, by way of comparison, if you don't mind my revisiting that subject, when uh, we started uh, the television show in the early 80s, uh, the camera was what's called an ikigami. Uh, and that camera, I believe at that time, was about $30,000. Now, you can get a pretty a good camera, really, a high-definition camera for somewhere in the territory of about 2000 or three. Uh, there's a lot of difference between starting a television show back then and doing one now. 
Uh, and back then, the editing gear cost, I, I don't know, hundred thousand dollars. And now you can edit a television show on your laptop. So it's real easy to be on television. And that's great. I'm not complaining. Hey, the more outdoor shows, the better. That's fabulous. Uh, if it if it if it's of interest to youngsters to watch television, watch fishing shows and hunting shows, and get them in the outdoors, then that's wonderful. Okay, uh, I I wish they can't be. Of course, I wish they were all really good. Mine weren't all, no, but I wish they all were. Uh, it's better for all concerned. Look, that really works. Look. Sure looks like it, yes. No kidding. i got to uh, remember that. Uh, this time of year, oh, wait, mm -hmm. I lost the question. Hold on. Oh, boy. This time of year is a fishing question. Uh, Sleepy. On. Okay. Uh, Can't find it. All right. Yeah, it's a, uh, what's the best um, lure for bass? This time of year uh well there's always a few bass that are shallow and you can catch them on plastic worms something like that that's the best overall artificial bait for largemouth bass in the world because you can fish it deep shallow large small light color dark color uh fast slow 60 feet six feet and all this plastic worm that was that's the best overall bait for bass uh right now uh i gotta tell you this time of year uh, i would have a heart if i went someplace that was reasonably I had a reasonable expectation of catching largemouth less than say uh 12 or less than 20 feet i would use a, a crawfish imitation bait a mop jig or some kind of a jig, some kind of, some uh, a crawfish imitation, uh, because that's what they eat this time of year. Because all the other forage fish are huddled up cold, just like the bass are. They don't travel around. They don't migrate. They don't go up. They don't go down. They just kind of scuffle around in the in the trees and in the brush, and that's where the crawfish live. So use a crawfish imitation if that was be the only bait i had with me or could pick would be a crawfish imitation and i like a mop jig because it has on the side of the bait it has rattles and I, you'll just have to trust me on this a crawfish when he swims and he you know he swims backwards okay it he makes a makes a clicking sound when he does that not that i've heard it but that's what i've been told Okay, anything else right now? Um, what the, just comments. What time's it nothing, getting big? Um, it's, it's getting about that time. Let me look. It's, oh, as a matter of fact, it is 7.03. Oh. So you're, you're basically... I'm, over, I'm you're, overtime. You're out of time, yeah. I don't make any more money because it's overtime. I can tell you that. But No. But a lot of people are watching, and this will be on Facebook... Uh, forever, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but I, well, I wish I could talk with you directly. And we're working on that. There's some new new software that we may jump into in the next couple of weeks in which you and I can converse during this period of time. Are we through? I don't know. It depends on you. Looks like that fire's going well back there. Yeah, sure enough. That's that a good it. idea. Thank you very much. There Was that Craig... That was Craig. Uh, uh, Mike. I think it Mike, was Mike. Mike, Mike Terrell. Terrell. No, Terrell. Mike Terrell said that. that. Okay, was. I thought it was. Yeah. Okay. Somebody's been trying, uh, been tying some crappy flies lately for the last two days, getting ready to go crappy fishing, huh? Evidently. Is it crappy fishing time? Well, yeah, it's, you know, it, it won't be long after this cold spell. The, about the full moon in February, it'll be time for you to start fishing the shallow waters with uh, minnow Im imitations. Uh, light line, tiny little road runners, uh, tiny little baits. True Turn makes a variety of baits. You know, just go into a Walmart or whatever 
and just settle in or go to the internet and settle in on that on the true turn crappy fishing guide uh, crappy fishing page you get everything you need and it's quality product various colors the the hooks are red does that make a difference yes it does does it mean the difference between five fish and 50 fish in a day? No, but it might mean the difference between five fish and seven fish. Would you rather have seven? Well, then use a red hook. They fish gravitate toward that. And if you're catfishing and crappy fishing, bass fishing, I always, <coughs> over, in the last 15, 18 years, I've all, I always use a red hook. And... Uh, a true turn hook, as a matter of fact, or a Daiichi. Super sharp, super strong, and uh, it's quality stuff. And we're going to, I'm going to, uh, th on this coming Saturday's morning show, I'm going to tell you the story of true turn. It's a fascinating, quite frankly, story about how true turn got started and how the originator of the thing, uh, designed the hook and how, what necessitated or what was the trigger to make that hook with a bend in it. Uh-huh. Uh, it's a fellow by the name of Campbell. I'll tell you a little bit about it now. Are we done? Yes, you're okay. over time. I'm over time. A fellow by the name of Campbell, he worked at uh, an Air Force base in Montgomery, Alabama, and he was a computer operator. And you remember the old movies and movies now, the, the uh, computer machine dropping out all the cards, and they had holes in them. And the, uh, the computer read the holes, but it couldn't read the holes if the cards, the cards weren't stacked correctly. So he, he designed, he found out if he used to, a a wire and bent it in a certain fashion that he could stick it through those cards and turn them, turn that wire, and it would line all the cards up right. And he thought, Ooh, if the hook is in the fish's mouth and it comes, starts to pull out and it turns, It'll hook him instead of coming out. The birth of the true turn hook. Here How about come. that? Okay. All right. The final. Ready? What in the world is O'Neill's nickname? I'll see you later.